Okay guys, uh, trying to come to you today with a bit of an informal video. See if I can get away from this pump a little bit. Uh, we got a pump out of Kansas City here. This is an old family farmhouse. Uh, some of my um, mom's relatives, they used to come here out of Kansas City. This was their uh, rural suburban family. They'd come hang out here, fish in the ponds and everything. And the house is in uh, kind of in disrepair. And a friend of theirs is, um, I got him some ICF and uh, some know-how. He's in construction. It's his first ICF project ever. It's not my project, but uh, he's getting ready. They're, they just primed out. It sounds like they just started pouring. So uh, I'm going to follow around and uh, kind of watch them pour, and then I'll show you. It's pretty wild. They got this old farmhouse jacked up about eight feet up in the air from where it used to sit. They're putting a full nine-foot basement under it. It's pretty cool. I'll kind of get into why that. I mean, it's an old house, but it's a really common problem in Kansas City. The concrete uh, foundations get broken up pretty bad a lot of times. Okay, so the guy in the red shirt is Jonas Riley. This is uh, this is his shindig. Uh, he did all the forming. Like I said, this is his first pour. He's picked a, a tricky one. Like I said, he's under a house. So you see how he's having to bow that. I told him probably these pump guys I don't know them very well but if you could get a trim hose which is your flexible it's kind of like a uh, fire hose and if you can get a trim hose pouring an ICF is much easier they opted for an 8 inch core wall just because like I said the soil around Kansas City is very expansive and it has a potential to kind of crush inward on a on foundation walls so if it does that it uh they just wanted the extra couple inches, the extra stability of the eight inch core. So I didn't say anything to Jonas while he was uh, blowing and going here, but uh, he actually, you can see how much he put in there. He got it within about a foot of the top, right in the corner. And that's, uh, that's scary. You can see kind of down there in the corner, let's see what, it, it started to try to separate. He just put, he's pouring it pretty wet. I would say that's every bit of a six uh, slump. You can just see how wet it was when he came out of the wall here. And uh, it's just a lot of pressure. It's, it's holding. Like I said, we poured 18, 19 feet in a shot, but what, you want to take it in steps, you know, three, four feet at a time, rounding, rounding. I don't know these pump guys. I don't, I mean, Jonas's guys, I, I'm not here to tell them what to do. So I kind of let him roll. But once he stopped, I said, man, I think I'd, uh, I'd hold up a little bit because I would not have probably tried to fill that window. They got it all the way full and capped, which is awesome. I probably wouldn't have gone that high with the first lift but he got away with it so far. Okay, you're gonna hear me say this over and over again in this video, but um, the, the only issue we had on this entire pour was that pump and Jonas, they've never worked together before, and they really needed a trim hose on this, especially with the obstructions of the house and all that steel hanging out of it. He really struggled by not having that hose. Um, he really didn't know to push for it, but if you're pouring an ICF, it's an absolute must. How you liking your first ICF pour, Jonas? I love it. He loves it. Love it. We'll talk about it when you're done. I don't want to keep you from uh, your concentration at the moment, but. All right. So pretty interesting kind of how they did this. They came in with like, you know, like trailer beams and uh, just lifted the entire house way up and cribbed it. You can see he's got it, you know, about two thirds of the way full. He's, he's plugging along, he's doing really good. Everything's going good. This is a pretty simple pour, other than the fact that there's a house on top of it, making it hard to place the concrete. Because it's, uh, I think it's like 32 by 28 rectangle. It's pretty straightforward. He's got quite a few openings for it being a basement wall. He's got some windows going in and stuff, but it's a pretty, pretty interesting little project on a hundred year old farmhouse. Another good thing I never really talk about, you see that sewer pipe, the penetration, so much easier than doing it in a form wall. You don't want to cut a hole in your expensive plywood forms or you don't want to core drill it later it's a really nice way to go i have to get out of jonas's way they've got a little kink in the scaffolding here they get across it sorry about the camera work but so you've got to hustle up and get across there
around the corner. I don't know if you can see down in there, but it's it's running. Like I said, I usually tend to always pour a little dry. Um, I move more, but it's uh, I think they've got it down now. They're not stacking it near as high, so it's going pretty good. <laughs> the guy in the gray shirt apparently watches a lot of our videos here, and uh, he's got a house he's getting ready to build for himself. He's a DIY type dude and he's building his own ICF. And uh, I've actually talked to him on YouTube a couple times and he didn't know I was gonna be here. He just randomly saw the Fox blocks stacked up and uh, hollered at Jonas. So kind of interesting small world thing, but uh, he's, uh, he's gonna be doing some videos on YouTube for ICF as well. All right, so they're working on their uh, second pass here and they're just topping it off as they go. Pretty smooth, they've got the hang of it completely now. Like I said, the. The one variable they're fighting on this one is that house being up there. That is a, that is a tricky, tricky deal. If they had a trim hose, life would be easier, but it's doable without it. And just, the walls are nice and straight already. I gave him, kind of told him how to do that with the Zonson Zuckles, how to bow it, bow it in just a little bit so he can, he can torque it straight at the last minute. I, I have a feeling we got enough here. <laughs> this guy over here is helping. <laughs> All hands on deck except the guy holding the camera. He's staying out of it. <laughs> kind of neat stuff you see when you're working on a hundred year old house. They got an old brick cistern uh, that used to uh, collect rainwater. Back when I was a kid, they were still drinking water out of, um, out of the first spring fed pond on the, they have city water now, but I, I was just talking to one of, the, one of the cousins. But I remember that they would have a pond that you weren't allowed to swim in or churn up because it was the drinking water pond all right he's coming around uh second to last corner he's getting a little worried about his uh consumption because he spilled a little like he's doing right here but uh i think he's got he ordered about a yard and a half extra without taking out for windows so i think he's gonna be golden the truck's not rattling yet and he only has to get to right there and he's he is done so he is uh i think he's gonna make it Jonas is, uh, is a bit of a redneck renaissance man. He, uh, he comes out of Florida, he ran a construction company. His wife is a large animal vet. And he uh, semi-recently got into Wagyu beef as a side business. So he, uh, he's into a lot of uh, different things, but I think he's absolutely in love with the ICF. And being that he lives in Tulsa now, he is right smack dab in the middle of Tornado Alley. and. Uh, you know, ICF is very popular there. In fact, uh, one of my good buddies from Fox Blocks is that's his home territory. So I think I'm gonna introduce them and uh, see what they can do together. Okay, so they're putting the anchor bolts in. Jonas took the time to actually mark out where they go and make these little blocks for him before he started. So he's, uh, he's doing it right. But that's kind of the last step, they got it licked. Make sure all the walls stayed straight and use the zuckles to fix them if they didn't and he's got it licked. Okay, so real quick, I kind of want to talk about, obviously this is a random house, random project because the house is up in the air on these cribs and pouring under that it's just kind of an added layer of complexity. But it went really good. You can kind of just see the bleed water coming out of it right now. But the reason something like this is not going to be uncommon in this part of the country you can see how the soil is cracked because it's all dry. It's a really expansive, kind of a black clay mixture that's really common up here. And when it gets around a house, this one, this is a hundred and some year old farmhouse that was sitting up on a, a rock foundation and concrete foundation. And over the years, the, the pressure on wet and wet seasons, when that soil gets uh, hydrated and expands was so great. I mean, it was just broken to pieces all around it. And the whole house would have eventually just fallen into the hole. So. You know, this is um, more of a sentimental remod. This is, um, you know, my mom's family, uh, some of their uh, cousins and stuff um, have, have been in the family for, you know, 100 years and they've all got memories of swimming in the ponds, fishing. This was their, the country cousins, if you will, that they would come out and hang out with and have a blast with. And this, uh, this remod's gonna keep it going another couple generations, guys. This foundation is, uh, it's here to stay, it's here forever. And what they're gonna do, I'll take you up before just for fun, I'll, I'll climb up into the house. I mean, it's got miles to go, but it's, uh, you know, this will give it the foundation it needs to justify all the things it needs on the inside. 
and uh, like I said, we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back at you next time with the uh, the termite vid. Okay, so for fun, I just climbed up in here, just kind of, and it's crazy because I was in this house. I mean, I caught my first fish in the pond down there. You really, uh, there's no way you're gonna be able to see it, but right down there through there, you can kind of see the water. They got three spring-fed ponds in a row on my little Snoopy rod and reel when I was about three years old. But uh, I remember this house being so big and you know, looking around, I mean, it's probably 600 to 700 square feet, little little house. And you can see down here, there's uh, the basement it used to have. I don't even know where the stairs were, but I guess they probably went down right where I just climbed up. But they went, uh, they were just, it was a cellar. It was probably a six foot deep basement. So that's why the house is gonna sit up higher than it used to and just be, um, be a heck of a lot more usable space. And I think they're gonna kind of use it for a hunting cabin and you know, just kind of keep the farm in the family. And I, I really like that sentimentality. You know, a lot of my stuff's about, uh, you know, business and uh, rental property and everything else. But my own personal house is the same way. It was my grandparents' house. And I am trying to make it what they always wanted to make it and stay in it forever. And that's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so, uh, Jonas is all done here today. The pump just took off and uh, wanted to get his impression because this was his very, very first. I mean, he's done tons of construction over the last 20 years, but first ICF job. So I kind of wanted to get your thoughts. A lot of guys are really kind of afraid of it from a DIY or like a first timer perspective. So uh, what'd you think? It, fairly, it was easy. The install was easy. Um, the pump was fairly easy. The only problem was uh, it would have been nice to have a smaller pump. Well, what I'll say about that is watching that pump guy, I mentioned it a few times during the pour. First thing is always ask for a trim hose. If the guys don't know what that is or don't have it, get a different pump. I don't know if that guy had one or had access to one, but that's like the fire hose looking thing you see me pouring with a lot. And what that does is uh, it allows you a lot more control and you can actually squeeze it off. You can almost kink it with your hands so you don't end up with all those blasts. Like you can shut it down. Also, you know, John Martin, the guy that pumps a lot of mine for roast, he's got that knuckle. It's like an air latch and he can shut that concrete down in a split second so when he gets to a corner when you're spilling all that out there you wouldn't so that wasn't your fault at all that's just the pump being you know that was that was a pretty uh pretty wild pump so for your first time you were definitely uh playing from behind on that plus you got a freaking big ass house sitting up on top of you so <laughs> i do uh you know fighting all that but i think you went really well you had no issues and I mean, right off the bat, you were filling up a corner and you filled it up almost all the way. So yeah, yeah, not, not afraid. <laughs> no, no uh, it, it's an awesome system. If there's anybody out there trying to do it for the first time, do not be afraid of it. it, it it's pretty special. Sweet. And I'm gonna give you Alfonso's number. He's your uh, Fox Blogs guy in Tulsa. Okay. And we'll see what you boys can do down there. All right, bud. Thank time. you. Yep. See you guys next time.